we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is How Hacks Work. This episode is all about parties, so get your best playlist on, dust off that Hawaiian shirt and put the drinks on ice, because we've got some of the most fun, fabulous and fantastic tips to help your party be the talk of the town. I've been known to go to parties, but I'm the sort of guy who generally hangs out in the kitchen next to the fridge. That's one way of staying cool. We all love a party, but the stress of throwing one can mount up. So we've put together a load of hacks to help you let your hair down in style. From show-stopping drinks to the coolest cups on earth. I'm not a fan of party decorations. I kind of think that the people and what they do are the decorations, which means they're kind of gross. And in our epic hack, we'll show you a quick fire way to get rid of some unwanted after-party mess in an explosive instant. You know what? That was really loud. I think that's a great way to pop loads of balloons and also clear a party. To get this party started, our first clip will show you how to pour your favourite fizzy beverage with grace and panache, instead of all over your guests. Bubbles in fizzy drink are carbon dioxide. This is gas that's been dissolved in that liquid at very high pressures. By hacking a hole in a can, you can avoid these annoying bubbles forever, making sure that the only things getting messy at your shindig are your guests. As the liquid comes out of the can, it creates a vacuum behind it, and that has to be filled with air. The only way for air to get into the can is through the opening of the can, which means, in other words, it glugs. Glugging makes more fizz because it causes the liquid to move around much more violently. By cutting a hole in the back of the can, the air can get through the back instead of the front, so no glugging needs to happen. In other words, the liquid drops out nicely with minimal fizz. Any hack which means you can spend a few more hours in bed instead of the dreaded after-party cleanup is a massive hit. If impressing your guests with a visually spectacular but ultimately fairly pointless drink dispensing display sounds like your kind of thing, I've got the vid for you. A Rube Goldberg machine is basically a contraption that massively overcomplicates a really simple task. If this show had a middle name, Anna, it would be overcomplicated. I've seen quite a lot of Rube Goldberg machines, but this one is particularly nice. The largest drinks fountain ever contained 50,116 glasses, which is over 1,000 loads in a dishwasher. I think with a lot of these clips for this show, a lot of them are sort of silly, frivolous, you know, just, you know, mucking about kind of things. But then occasionally, one comes along that you watch and you think, wow, that has got a really practical application in everyday life. Th this isn't one of those. I agree with George for once. If you have this much time on your hands, you definitely need a hobby or a job. A mad, manic miss. It's a nightmarish world not worth imagining. But if you ever host a party without a bottle opener, this hack may just save your reputation. Why I haven't thought of this before, I do not know. Because you've got a bottle opener? This hack works in a very similar way to a conventional corkscrew. You use the fork as a lever in order to get some traction on the top of the screw in order to pull the cork out. A lot of people think cork is just a manufactured product, but in actual fact it's natural. It comes from the bark of the cork oak and it's harvested every 9 to 12 years. Wouldn't Chris be brilliant to have on your team in a pub quiz? Whether you're more likely to have a screw and a fork than a bottle opener is anyone's guess. But when the chips are down, this hack is an absolute corker. You've heard of skating on thin ice, 
How about drinking from it? Here's the perfect solution to keeping those summer party drinks cool. But please don't put your drink down and forget about it. It could result in a nasty slip on the dance floor. So by putting water in between the two cups and then freezing it, you're able to recreate the shape of a cup in ice. I made some of these, but I was really disappointed because when I put them in the dishwasher, they just disappeared. Avoid the pain of smashed glass by making your glasses freezing. Extremely fragile and hazardously slippery. An ice cool hit. Coming up, Mike and Marcus get gassy as they show us the best way to handle balloons at a party. Before unveiling the epic hack, an awesome way to get rid of them all at the end of the night. So far, we've shown you an epic drink pouring technique, a corker of a bottle opener, and an ice cool drink container. But let's hit the internet to see what other party tips it has for our impressionable minds. If ordering James Bond's favourite cocktail doesn't quite feel cool enough, here's a video which will definitely give you a licence to thrill. I introduce to you a wonderful hack about creating your garnish ice cubes. It's all about the speed at which you freeze things. You can basically freeze anything as long as you freeze it fast. And if you remember one catchphrase from this whole show, make it that one. This very easy martini hack will leave you shaken, stirred and freezing. A chilled hit. Every great party deserves a great lighting display. A high-speed ceiling fan, cheap torches tied to it with a string, a dark room? Yeah, nothing's going to go wrong here. The difference between these different kinds of lights is its wavelength, and that's the same in different colours of light as well. So a blue wavelength is shorter than a red wavelength. Light is the fastest thing in the universe. It travels at 300 million metres per second. If you were travelling at the same speed of light, time would literally stop for you. Hmm, budget-busting pyrotechnic display or borderline insane use of domestic torches. Oh, go on then, a fun-filled hit. Now, if you really want some watermelon juice but hate how supermarkets sell it really conveniently and easy to dispense cartons with no mess, this hack's definitely for you. Just cut a hole in the top, mush up the insides, add a tap, and you've got watermelon on demand. Yes, this hack is literally cutting a hole in a melon. Welcome to the future. If you think making a melon into a drinks dispenser is fun, why don't you have to clean it all up after you've managed to squeeze two small glasses of juice out of it? Warning, this definitely does not work with oranges. Water way to serve juice. Yeah, watching this one. Meanwhile, at the brain surgery school. Watermelon is very good for you. It contains lots of important vitamins and minerals, um, like most fruits. But one of the things that it does contain is choline. Choline is used to make up lots and lots of really important things in our bodies. I always say the key to any good party is a decent dose of choline. Watermelons didn't always look like they do today. In fact, ye olde watermelon would have made a pretty poor drinks dispenser. Back in the 1600s, watermelons looked like this. So what happened to them? It turns out that humans have selectively bred many of our fruit and veg to look totally different to what they do today. Peaches used to look more like cherries. Today's perfect peach is juicier, sweeter and a whopping 64 times larger. But perhaps the most amazing of our frankenfruits is the corn on the cob. We've supersized it 1,000 times. They say big isn't always better, but we always say when it comes to fruit-based drink dispensers, it definitely is. Watermelons can range in size from 1 to 90 kilograms, and the world record is 156 kilograms of watermelon. You might have heard a few years ago uh, the Japanese were making square watermelons um, because they just wanted them to snack better, which makes perfect sense. I've never been to a party where someone has requested watermelon juice, so for that reason and many, many more, this is a messy miss. Are you a fire starter? A twisted fire starter? You will be after this next video. If you don't even have candles, pour a little of olive oil in a bowl and drench some paper towels in the olive oil. 
This hack works because oil is more flammable than just paper on its own. So oil ignites at around 93 degrees Celsius, whereas paper will only ignite at 233 degrees Celsius. What you're doing is heating it up so that the oil vaporises, and this means it reaches the flash point, which is the point at which it can ignite and burn. Keep those fires burning and those coals turning with this flaming hot hack. A hit! If you struggle to keep your party guests entertained between courses, what you might need is an animated table. What's that, you ask? Keep watching! Playing an interactive cartoon on your dining table is a great way of stimulating conversation at your party while bringing a whole new meaning to TV dinners. The way this hack works is they've actually built a screen into the table itself, so they're just shining up this animation from underneath. I think there's so much potential with animated tables. We have this surface that we eat off every day and we don't utilise it to the maximum potential. There's, there's so much we can do. I think if I was at a dinner party and this sort of thing was happening, I'd question what they'd put in the pre-dinner drinks. Whilst this is very clever, encouraging your guests to stare at the table for too long probably isn't the best way to get your dinner party off to a swinging start. So I'm afraid I'm putting my foot down and saying this is an impressive miss. While parties may be fun, clearing up after them certainly isn't. But one person who's found a nifty solution to this is our Mike at Hack HQ. Mike. Marcus. As you can see, I'm ready for our epic party hack. What are you going to store for me today? I'm guessing something messy, impractical and hilarious. Today is our party hack, and you can't have a party without balloons. Indeed. Well, unless you're over the age of nine. Yeah, but after a party, you've got to go around popping all the balloons. It takes ages, and there's loads of mess. Yeah, well, I've got a hack later on that we're going to get rid of the balloons instantly, and it's all to do with the gas that we fill it with. OK, so what kind of things can we fill a balloon with? Well, get blowing. Oh, all right. <laughs> so you can obviously inflate them with your, with your mouth. <laughs> or... We've got some other gases, like carbon dioxide, that you can make with household chemicals, like bicarbonate of soda. Chuck some of that in. Is that the same sort of stuff you use to make cakes? Um, it is, exactly right. Let's chuck a load of that in. And then vinegar, a oh. very weak acid. So if I pour the vinegar into there, you get a reaction between the acid and the alkali, and that produces carbon dioxide, which, look at that, an instantly inflating balloon with carbon dioxide. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool, but I still think that this is winning. What else can we put in a balloon? Right, so we've got some other gases. A very unreactive gas, like carbon dioxide, is argon. All right. So if I fill this balloon with argon... Why do you want an unreactive gas in a balloon? So you want an unreactive gas so you don't have any surprises at your party. You want something <laughs> nice and unreactive so it doesn't blow up accidentally. Argon is an element and it's a noble gas, so it means it's really unreactive. It barely reacts with anything. Okay. Um, carbon dioxide is a mixture of carbon and oxygen. There we go. Right, that's that looking a bit better than my balloon at the moment, right? Hold it a bit quicker than that one, that's for sure. Definitely. All right, tie a knot in that. You hold on to that one. See how that one floats. Uh, that was a little bit disappointing, mate. Lead balloon, wasn't it? Yeah, literally. So you've got a really dense gas in there, so it's much denser than the air around it, so it plummets to the floor and bounces. OK, cool. A denser gas in a balloon means that it basically drops straight drops. to the floor. Cool. But I want my party balloons to float, Mike. So I've got another gas here, helium. Right. Now, if you turn that valve this on the top, yep, here. screw that in. That's it. That fills up really quickly. Yeah. Good? That's a good sized balloon, yep, thank you. Right. Tie knot in this one, and then you see how this one goes. That's what I'm talking about. That's <laughs> the kind of party balloon I need. Way better than this. Much, much better. And it's a non reactive gas, so it's nice and safe at your party. Cool. So, different types of gases work with balloons differently. So, a heavy gas would make a balloon drop to the floor. Something like helium that's light goes up, but we want them to be unreactive. We want them to be unreactive. Right, so even though helium's cool, you're saying we need a light, reactive gas for our epic hack. Exactly, so the hydrogen is light, just like helium, but it needs to be reactive, and I'll show you later on why we need that. Join us later when we show you the ultimate hack for a task you had no idea you needed one in Mike's balloon-popping epic hack. In our fun-filled party episode, we've already shown you how to serve the coolest party drinks, a show-stopping music display, and how to entertain your next dinner guests. Coming up, we really crank up the entertainment factor with a macabre music hack 
a cool way of chilling your wine, and the party popper to end all party poppers. This video will definitely make your next Halloween party playlist bone chilling. If you didn't think playing vinyl was quirky enough, how about doing it with a skull? Uh, yeah, this is a clip from the video 101 Ways to Summon the Devil. If you look closely, you can see a little wire going down by the bird's beak. That sharp implement is feeling the ridges in the vinyl, and then it's going to what's known as a contact um, microphone. Information about the music is encoded in the grooves of the record. And as the needle gets pushed over them, it vibrates in a specific way. So records are made from a type of plastic called polyvinyl chloride, which most people know as PVC. In the past, it was actually made from shellac, which was a lot more brittle and had a good chance of breaking. So what is shellac? Shellac is made from the secretions of a tiny bug called the lac beetle, which lives in Asia. The beetle feeds from sap in trees, which is transformed in their body and excreted almost constantly while they eat. The shellac is scraped from the bark of the trees and heated till it liquefies. It's then filtered to remove bark, bugs and impurities. The thick, sticky shellac is dried and broken into flakes to be sold as a natural form of plastic. As well as making early records, shellac's flakes can be dissolved in pure alcohol to make nail varnish and wood sealants. So next time you're playing the Beatles, think the Beatles. I shouldn't, but I'm going to say this record is a hit. The only thing more infuriating than no wine is warm wine. So here's a way to quickly get the temperature down on your favourite party tipple. I've done this and it does work really well. And I, I learned it years ago and I, I always do it with newspaper. We've all been in that situation. You haven't cooled your wine or your vodka down with enough time. And so if you cool down your cloth, wrap it around, then that means that when you put it in the freezer, the cloth is going to conduct the coolness much better than the air. And so it's going to cool down your wine or your vodka that little bit faster. My thought with this clip watching it is it's red wine he's doing it with. Does he know nothing? For the party host who has remembered nearly everything, this is a vintage hack. A hit. Bread and cheese, knife and fork, yi and yang. Some things just go well together. And for this show, parties and poppers are a marriage made in heaven. Looking more like a weapon from Mad Max than a party accessory, this is one serious piece of kit. Could you just have a huge party popper rather than lots of small party poppers? Um, or is that a bomb? This hack is really simple. You take like a hairpin lever, attach all of the party poppers on one side, and all the strings to the other side. When you pull on the string, it rubs the gunpowder paste against the paper. And that small amount of friction creates a small amount of heat. And that heat is enough to set off that gunpowder. Was it worth all that effort? Probably not. Did it get a big cheer and make everyone laugh? Yes! Then it's got to be a party starting hit. If you absolutely hate balloons after a party and want to see them not only cleaned up but destroyed, this next hack is for you. Let's just ignore the fact that getting them all in a massive line like this probably takes 43 times the effort of just picking them all up in the first place. Pops one, then the other, then the other. Then the other, will it go, will it not go? And I just don't think I've been in that much suspense for like 20 balloons <laughs> all in a row. It's not really cleaning up, is it? I mean, it's making loads more mess. Laser actually started off as an acronym. So it was light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. But lasers that produce light completely by themselves aren't technically light amplifiers. They are optical oscillators. So lasers shouldn't be called lasers, they should be called losers. <laughs> this looks more like a mass execution than a fun party hack. It has to be a miss. Over to Hack HQ. The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong for Mike to handle. And with his trusty guinea pig Marcus, he'll try anything so that you don't have to. A 
Earlier at HackHQ, we gave you an explosive science lesson showing how different gases behave when used to inflate balloons. Now it's time to show us how to call time on any party with our amazing balloon-popping epic hack. And knowing Mike, that's probably going to involve something a lot more complicated than a pair of scissors. Might get my goggles on for this one. Uh, all right, this looks all right, Mike, but how are we going to get rid of them? This is Mike, so I'm guessing the answer isn't going to be wait till they come down by themselves. So pleased you asked. In these balloons, I've got a light, very reactive gas. Right. Hydrogen. Knew it. Hydrogen. Pop on your ear defenders. Now, when I light this, yep. it burns. Whoa! <laughs> Explosively! <laughs> what happened there? So, my blowtorch, it melted that balloon, right. which caused it to burst. Now, inside there, there was hydrogen. Oxygen in the atmosphere reacts with it, ignites with the blowtorch, and a big bang. OK, so hydrogen and oxygen mixing with a little igniter yep. means you get a big explosion. Exactly. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I could feel it. You really can, can't you? I can do better than that. Better than that? Much better than that. So if I combine the two gases, the oxygen and the hydrogen, in one balloon, it would be a much bigger explosion. Right. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea, Mike. Are you ready for this one? <laughs> Got no choice, Mike. No, right. <laughs> you ready? Guess so. <laughs> that was nuts! Seriously violent, isn't it? Rough childhood. What made that so much more violent? So that had the hydrogen and oxygen combined inside the balloon. So as soon as the energy from the blowtorch hit that, it exploded. Didn't need to mix with the atmosphere. So if you combine the gases first and give it the same little ignition, you get a much more violent much explosion. Much more violent explosion. But of course, I can't do it to all of these. So these are just filled with hydrogen. Yeah, and that's pretty cool, but you still have to go around popping them one by one, though. Aha! I'm going to do away with this and pick up my electrical firing system. Ah. Now, you'll notice that each balloon has a little igniter on it, so that provides the energy, the heat, to actually pop the balloon and set fire to the hydrogen. All I need to do is press the buttons and kaboom, they're all gone. All right. Should we do it? Yeah. All right, a bit further away, I think. Let's take a step back. And ear defenders on. Right, OK, so the firing system is armed. All, right. All I need to do now is press the buttons. You ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Of course, to avoid having to use this hack in the first place, you could not fill your balloons up with highly reactive gases. <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right, you might have missed a couple, but that was awesome. I can sort that right. out. Of party stragglers. But yeah, so the firing system, it provided just enough energy to pop the balloons, set the hydrogen on fire, and clear them completely. Look, you know what? That was really loud. I think that's a great way to pop loads of balloons and also clear a party. Yeah, yeah, so all that's left now is um, sweeping up. Yeah. Leave you to that. What do you mean? Here's a broom. All right, cheers, Mike. Cleaning again, eh? Find your jacket, get your taxi booked, and order one for the road, cos that's the end of our party episode. We hope you'll put to good use this arsenal of festive hacks. We'll see you next time. Party on! Yeah.